guys, this is Terry with Good Dog Coaching and Pet Care, and I'm here with Caesar. Uh, Caesar's one of our newest board and trains. He is a four month old German Shepherd, as you can see. And um, he's here with us for obedience, basic obedience training. And you know, some of the things, some of the issues his parents have been experiencing, typical puppy stuff, uh, you know, jumping, overexcited behavior. Um, he's been going potty in his crate. That's not necessarily typical, but um, they don't typically want to go where they have to lay down unless their crate is too big. But um, so we're going to be working on all of that stuff. Going to be teaching him all the basic obedience commands and beginning remote collar training as well. Uh, he just arrived yesterday. And we were working with him yesterday on some sit drills and down drills. And so uh, we're gonna do a little bit more of that today. He hasn't, they've been working with him at home, but he hasn't had any like formal training. So this is all, he's all pretty green to all of this. And um, you know, it is amazing what just kind of getting them in the mode of, of doing these drills and calms them down, gives them something to focus on, um, wears them out, you know, both physically and mentally, physically, because they're doing drills. Sit drills are like, you know, you're doing squats. Down drills are like you're doing push-ups. And then the mental, you know, him having to focus absolutely tires them out. So it really does set them up for success when you do create them. And at this age, you should be creating them whenever you're not actively uh, engaged or training with them. Now, that prevents them from practicing a lot of negative behaviors and, um, you know, when you do have them out, you have them on a leash, really important. This is a simple tool, but it is the most amazing tool uh, because it gives you access to control. Right now, we don't have verbal control on him because he's not trained. So we need to have physical control. You know, if you're trying to teach your dog to sit and down and place and all of that, and you don't have a leash on them, they can just walk off. They can jump on you. Um, they can do all kinds of things. So just having a leash on your dog is, is amazing. Yeah, and yes, even in the house. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. All right, so we're just gonna, I'm just gonna do a little recap with him of some sit drills and down drills, and then we're gonna move to the place command. Let's go. So at first I'm just gonna use leash pressure, and we were using food, and I will be using food to reward him. But in the beginning, if you're just teaching your dog, let's say the sit command, you can use food and this is actually his food, it's not treats, it's, we do food training here. Uh, you can use it to lure him into position while you simultaneously pull up a little bit on the leash. As soon as his bottom hits the ground, you can say yes and release the pressure and give him the food. We're using a clicker in place of the word yes, so you'll see how that goes. And I'll show you, like we've already, he already is understanding the leash pressure, but in the beginning, a little food luring and leash pressure together. Let's go. So it would look like this. As soon as his bottom hits the ground, we click and give the food. You, if you're not using a clicker, you could use a marker word like yes. Break. Yes. So we will eventually wean him off the clicker and onto a marker word because we're going to continue to food train him. Um, yes is a positive marker that and it's in place of the clicker. A clicker is a positive marker, and it's a predictor of food. Whenever we click this, it means food is coming, and we've taught him that by yesterday, loading the clicker. So you can check out our videos on loading the clicker. Uh, it's a very simple thing that you do. Um, so, you know, because eventually I don't want to have to carry the clicker around. The clicker's just nice in the beginning because it's very efficient. It makes the exact same sound every time. And it's real easy for the dog to understand to begin to understand that sound means they did something right and here comes food. So, break. So a little luring, a little leash pressure, break. And then the, re the release word that we use is break, like take a break. Okay. All right, so again, that's in the beginning. He already understands leash pressure, so I don't need to lure him with the food. Let's go. So just a little upward leash pressure as soon as his bottom hits the ground, the pressure goes away and here comes the click and then the food. Break. Break. So quick 
drills. You notice I'm keeping it very quiet, easy for him to focus and concentrate. I'm not using his name. I'm not saying, good boy. All that would just get him excited. Break. All right, so break. yesterday we were doing this with him and we did get to the point where we added the command. We like the saying, name it when you like it. So when the dog is struggling to do the command, we don't say the command. We wait until they're doing it well. We've taught him through the leash pressure and the food what we're what we're looking for. And at that point, once he's doing it well, like you see him doing it, um, then we add the command and it looks like this. So just before I raise up the leash, I'm gonna give the command. Break. Sit. We do this over and over and over. Break. And right now, we're not we're not looking for him to hold that command very long at all. It's drills pretty quick. Um, so we're just kind of teaching him about the leash pressure and what the command means. Okay. But as time goes on, we're gonna wait a moment before we click and reward. All right. We're gonna ask for a little bit of duration, which just means him holding that command for a little bit. We teach all of our. Um, or, or sit down in place with an implied stay, which means we don't say stay. We don't have to, we just teach them that that one word means to do that thing and to keep doing it until they hear us say break or let's go. Let's go. Sit. So you can, you know, when you start to add sit, good. So there's a, I was going to say, you can start to add a little bit of duration. So right there, he got up, sit, before I said break. So I would just repeat the command and the leash pressure goes on until his bottom hits the ground again. And then, uh, but I don't treat him right after that because I don't want him to learn to sit. Good. I don't want him to learn that breaking command gets him food. Break. So normally this early in the game, I wouldn't be asking him to hold it this long though. Okay, so break. We're going to move to the down command. So yesterday we were doing some down drills with him also. Um, I'm just going to warm him up a little. I'm going to use a little bit of leash pressure, which we were teaching him yesterday. Click and reward. Okay. Break. So when you're doing your drills, again, Don't walk all around. Just get him up and right back in it. Break. It's not a lot of leash pressure. It's just a tiny bit. Break. And then again, yesterday we were doing this, so we had added the word, so I'll add it back in. Oh, we got a distraction. Cool. Out. Good girl. So just before I do the leash pressure, I'm going to give the command. Down. Break. Down. pressure because um, you know if I'm standing here saying down 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 right like I'm teaching the dog that I have to say it over and over for them to do that thing 
I want the dog to understand that I'm going to give the command one time and then they need to do it, right? I only want to say it once. So by teaching them about leash pressure, I can down, make it happen. Now, in the beginning, um, like right now, break. we're teaching him, whether it's the sit or the down, that he can turn off the leash pressure by just doing the thing, right? The command. Um, he actually has control over the leash pressure. As soon as he goes, in this case, down, down, the leash pressure goes away. And it's not, again, it's a tiny bit of leash pressure, but he feels it. And so eventually we'll teach him, we'll, you know, we'll have done so many drills that we'll teach him that he can avoid leash pressure altogether by just doing the thing that we've taught him to do. So in that case, we will give the command and pause a moment. If he does the command, he avoided the leash pressure. If he doesn't, we don't repeat the command, we just start the leash pressure. And he'll learn, oh, I can avoid that altogether just by doing the thing that you taught me to do. So it's pretty cool. Break. So that's the sit and the down with, or beginning, sit and down with Caesar. Down. And stay tuned for his progress. Again, he's about four months old, a little over four months old, and super smart, super cute. And um, we're going to be working to get him in a good place. Anyway, um, if you have questions or comments, you know, post them in the comment section, or you know, you can always email me at info at gooddogcoaching.com. Uh, if you've got a new puppy or a new dog, down. Um, happy to help you however I can. All right, take care.